We continue with unit two in equity valuation now and uh, we move ahead in terms of the broad need of uh, valuation and how we do it and some things to take care to move ahead to the more fundamental methods of uh, doing valuation. Remember we are talking about intrinsic valuation. So the first method that we're going to look at in detail is what is called as the discounted cash flow methods right now that's uh, that's what we've already seen is an absolute method which means it will judge the company or evaluate the company independently of any other market valuations right unlike relative valuations where you compare companies here you're going to look at an absolute value of a company right so let's uh, understand the DCF concept and recap uh, what we probably already know about it because we have studied a few of these concepts earlier we are going to build on those concepts as we go along right so we start with the you know the concept of uh, what is DCF and then necessarily build on the various kinds of DCF models namely the dividend discount model and the free cash flow models and how do we go about calculating discount rates and uh, uh, the cash flow calculations and interpretations and then the usage of methods based on industries right some of this part we have already done we have uh, we have uh, looked at basics of uh, these portions in earlier uh, sections of earlier courses so we're going to do a quick recap of these and then a primary chunk of our discussion would lie around how do we calculate cash flows and make interpretations around those and what kind of methods are we going to use based on different industries different companies and so on and so forth right so let's uh, recap what do we mean by dcf the process of valuing a company using the sum of the present values of all its future cash flows is called as discounted cash flow valuation right so it's a straight extension of the NPV rules there's a company that's giving cash flows of CF1 CF2 CF3 so on and so forth till CFN and we are trying to find the present value of these because we we want to find out the value of this company today right so there are three nuances in this valuation one is what is the cash flow second is what is the discount rate so CF R and the time N N is usually taken till infinity in um, in equity valuations right so that's a straight extension of the NPV rules we are trying to kind of discount the cash flows that the company is going to give us in future and uh, the process of valuing this company as the sum of present values of its future cash flows is going to tell us what is the DCF and what is the value of the company that's the basic premise of DCF right now the first question we had was what is the cash flow to solve that we start with the first method of discounted cash flow valuations which is called as the dividend discount model right now if you are a shareholder in a company the only tangible cash that you get is the dividend if you hold shares unless you sell those shares the only way the company gives shareholders anything from the company is in the form of dividends if they don't give dividends then you don't get anything right so technically if we were to discount all future cash flows from the company for calculating the NPV we will have to choose all dividends from the company in the future as a method of doing that right as, as the cash flows once we do that we can discount the dividends from the company using its cost of equity correct what is cost of equity the cost the return expected this is nothing but the return expected by the shareholders by shareholders correct so you're saying that dividend in the first year and dividend in the second year and dividend in the third year and dividend in the fourth year so on and so forth have to be all discounted at a rate to find what is the present value of these dividends correct that's the time value of money calculation and once we do that we basically arrive at what is going to be the value of the company since dividend is the only real cash flow tangible cash flow that is in your hands that's the advent of this method that's the logic behind this particular method being used right 
So how does it work? We've already seen that a DCF price is nothing but this calculation. Ideally, you would want to pay a price lesser than this because that would basically mean NPV is greater than zero, right? If I pay 100 and I get the value of all these as more than 100, only then will I want to invest in the company, right? So in other words, you're solving this, this equation for IRR. If R is the IRR, then how does this equation work? That's what is basically going to give you the fair price of the company based on its cash flows. Now under dividend discount model, these cash flows are nothing but the dividends of the company. So you have to basically change it to dividends. So you're getting all the dividends and all that. Now, if you assume that the company is in steady state, if you assume that the company is in steady state, then you basically start with, uh, with a particular growth rate G. Right, and then the dividends become D into one plus G and D into one plus G square, D into one plus G cube and so on and so forth. When you discount them, you can discount them using this. And if you remember, this is the sum of the infinite geometric progression that we had seen. If this continues till infinity, then we can find the sum of this using a formula which will which will give us uh, the sum of an infinite geometric progression right what is the first term here you will get the formula which will give you the equation as this dividend into one plus growth upon cost of equity minus growth rate correct how do we arrive at this if we look at this data the sum of an infinite geometric progression is given as a upon 1 minus k where a is the first term and k is the multiplication factor here that is 1 plus g upon 1 plus r every term is being multiplied so this is the first term and then every term is a multiplication of this number with the previous term correct so when you solve for this you will get the formula as dividend into 1 plus G upon R minus G. That is what the dividend discount model gives us as the method, right? Now, let's extend this in terms of our understanding of what is the benefit of a dividend discount model. Now, the key benefits are dividend is the real cash flow. So it gives a tangible valuation for any company. There is no other cash flow. So technically speaking, if I'm using discounted cash flow in its purest sense, I need to find out what is the cash flow, right? Dividend is only that cash flow that is available to us. If we were to use DDM as a primary method of valuation, right? If we were to use this as a primary method of valuation, it is in the benefit of the company that wants its share price higher to give higher dividends because higher the dividends, higher the price. So if I was running a company and uh, it was being valued on dividend discount model across the world, then it is in my interest to increase the dividends, which is good for the shareholders as well, right? So that's the second benefit that comes out. However, it is not that dividend discount models are without any kind of, uh, any kind of issues. There are a lot of issues that come with dividend discount models. What are those? First problem, is what do we do for a company that does not pay any dividend? Will the value be zero, right? So if we use this valuation and if a company does not pay any dividend, the NPV method will give the value as zero, but that is clearly incorrect. That's not true. It may be a small, new company, it's a nascent company, young company, or a fast growing company that is choosing to reinvest most of its earnings into future growth, remember? Dividend is equals to net profit minus reinvestment. Or in other words, net profit minus dividend is the reinvestment, right? So effectively, if the company chooses to reinvest all of its net profits because it is growing fast, it will not give a dividend. And hence, this method is going to create a problem. You could also have a scenario where the company pays dividend, but for whatever reason, that is too low. Same reason essentially that they're reinvesting into future growth. They're paying a little bit of dividend, but not too much. What happens 
The third reason is if dividend policy is driven not by pure cash flows or profits, but by considerations other than that. For example, promoters wanting some cash flows. Now, a prime example would be government entities, public sector unit, PSU entities that may pay dividends to the government even when they are not profitable. Right? If they're profitable, that's fine. But even when they're not profitable, there might be some dividends that might be going out. Or even when they are not really making cash flows, there might be some dividends that are going out. And what happens there? And what if the dividend growth rate is not stable? See, it's easy to kind of use the DDM if we are using this formula, which basically assumes stable growth rate. Usually, what would end up happening is you will only use the dividend discount model for steady state companies. What do we mean by steady state companies which are growing at a steady rate now? Why? Because in only those companies would dividends be high. Right? Dividends would be high in only those companies. Otherwise, dividends are going to get reinvested most of the times. Right? Projections of dividends is a difficult task, not only because you have to project the profits any which ways. One part of it is how much money will the company make that thing. But the second is what is the choice of the company? How much will they choose to pay in the form of dividends? That is also a projection that has to be made, which is a difficult projection. I can still project what is going to be the value of the company, but will they increase the dividend next year or not? I have no idea of that choice that they might have at that point of time, right? So essentially, its projection of dividends becomes difficult because first you have to project the net profit and then you have to project what is going to be the company's decision next year in terms of arriving at the dividend, right? So for all practical purposes, this model finds very, very uh, small application in the in the valuation world, especially in emerging markets. In emerging markets like India, you typically do not end up using dividend discount model. Nevertheless, it is useful to understand where can it be used and what kind of differentiation do we see there, right? So what are the cases where it may work? So it may work in cases where either the company pays a lot of its profits as dividend, so company just distributes bulk of its profits as dividend or if we believe that the company has reached steady state. Else in most cases, it would appear that the company is undervalued. Why? Because uh, uh, undervalued using the process, right? Why? Because uh, or overvalued in the market because we will be understating the company's earning capability based on the lower dividends. Right. Take a look at two companies that we have taken out here. India's FMCG sector, Hindustan Unilever and Dabur. These are dividend payout ratios, which is nothing but dividend divided by net profit. That's what we have put up for these two firms. And you will note that that number is significantly high for HUL, but not so high for Dabur. So between these two firms, if I were to ask you a question, which company will you be able to value better using DCF? Then your answer has to be HUL because they are paying bulk of their profits as dividends, right? Why are they doing it? Probably they find that they are big enough and at this point of time, they do, don't find enough reinvestment opportunities. Dabur might be a smaller firm and hence Dabur might be looking at more reinvestment opportunities within that frame. So that possibly drives this decision. But when bulk of the profits are given out as dividends, then you could possibly look at applying dividend discount model. So between these two firms, if you have to choose, there is no necessity that you have to value using this method only. But if you had to choose between these two companies, you would go with Hindustan Unilever HUL, right? That's basically what you look at. That's a case in point as to where DDM may work and where DDM may not work. It's important for us to understand that if a company is not giving dividends, dividends are smaller. If dividends are smaller, the price you will be find, finding would be smaller. So the method will undervalue the company and the market will say that the company seems overvalued because you will find a price of 100 here based on lower dividends, but the stock might be trading at 200 in the market, right? That's basically how we go about solving this problem. So now let's move ahead 
and uh, use an example uh, American corporation Ameritech corporation paid dividends per share of INR 3.5 in 2012 and uh, is expected to grow at 5% uh, a year forever right assume the cost of equity of 12% what is the value per share using steady state dividend discount model so basically you have to use the model D into 1 plus G upon R minus G substitute it with 3.5 into 1 plus 5 percent divided by 12 percent minus 5 percent as we solve for this we will get the value of the share so we'll look at that what that comes to now if we find that the stock was trading at INR 80 per share first question is it undervalued or overvalued and second question what would be the growth that we would have to have to justify this price right so let's solve this on an excel file we are saying the dividend is 3.5 this year we are saying growth rate is 5% we are saying cost of equity is 12% we can find the price of the share using the formula dividend into 1 plus the growth rate divided by R minus G the growth rate so we get the price of 52.5 that's the price we have derived right now if we look at what is the market price we say the market price is 80 so the first part of the question is the stock stock looks overvalued because we are finding a fundamental value of 52 rupees whereas the market price is at 80 rupees right now the next part of the question is assuming this is fixed and this is fixed how do I change the growth rate how do I change the growth rate such that price becomes 80 right so I can either do a trial and error and see if it is 6% what's the price if it is 7% what is the price and so on and so forth but if you remember we have learned something in Excel that allows us to do this what is that that is called a goal seek so we're going to do a goal seek here we're going to go to data we are going to go to what if analysis we're going to do a goal seek we are going to set cell b9 to value 80 and we're going to change this by changing the growth rate of this cell right and when we click ok it will give us the answer and it gives us a value that is 7.31 percent so if growth is 7.31 percent then the market price will be similar to what price we derive if growth is 5 percent then the price is this and it would appear overvalued so at 7.31 percent ignore the rounding error the market price becomes similar to the uh, to the derived price that we have right so that's basically what we mean by dividend discount model that is how we are going to use dividend discount model typically it is going to get used in firms which are in steady state which have attained a certain stature and size and are growing at a steady pace now so the formula that gets applied is straight away this formula this formula of d into 1 plus g upon r minus g this formula is also known as Gordon growth model right it's also known as Gordon growth model price is equals to dividend into 1 plus G upon R minus G we just solve this question using this formula that's how dividend discount model applies but remember it is not easy to apply this model in emerging markets like India because companies really don't pay too much dividends right and if they don't pay too much dividend then that's going to create an issue so that's where we end this particular section a couple of questions to end this what is the primary criticism of the dividend discount model and if a company's share is trading at rupees 200 while it pays a dividend of rupees 20 and the cost of equity is 15 percent what is the growth rate that justifies this price you can solve it two ways you can either solve price is equals to dividend into 1 plus G upon R minus G and solve for G in this or you can solve it the same way we did the earlier question start with an assumption of a growth rate find the price and then do a goal seek right just solve these two questions as we end this section 
थैंक यू